and Stanford for hosting the event, and uh, thanks for the media on Super Bowl week to be here to cover baseball. That's a big thing. But I think, you know, when you look at it, uh, baseball in the Bay Area is, is alive and well with Oregon State winning the national championship and Stanford being the number one team in the country for most of the year and will be most of the year this year. Um, having the Golden Spikes winner in the room today uh, with Vaughn, uh, it, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see that. And uh, what a great time to be a part of college baseball. Uh, excited about USF, you know, 21 years at USF for me. This will be my 21st year there on the Hilltop. And, uh, it's been a wonderful time to, to build a brand new stadium. This will be our third season in that brand new stadium. Uh, wonderful to see the program continue to stay competitive and, and be competitive. I thought the question asked earlier today was, you know, the West Coast Conference sometimes doesn't get the, I guess, attention that it deserves. But I think when you guys look at it, realistically, the West Coast Conference plays in the Pac-12 Conference every midweek. Uh, so if you're, if, you're in, if, you're, if you're here in the Bay Area, you play Stanford or Cal midweek, uh, and one of the teams in the West Coast Conference does it. And if you're in LA, you play UCLA and USC. And uh, if you're in the Northwest, you're playing Oregon State, Oregon, Washington, or Washington State. So um, I think a lot of that has to do with how great the Pac-12 Conference is and having to play them so many times. And I think that's what happens to the conference. But uh, I, I say thank you again to that because it sharpens us up. It, it makes us compete. It makes us uh, really work at our game and, and try to work at our game at a very high level. So uh, we know that, and, and hopefully we can prepare like that. Um, brought two Rileys with me today. Uh, a lot of reasons why. Number one, I didn't want to forget their name. So if I go Riley, it makes it easy for me. Uh, but these two kids, Riley Ornito, uh, to my right, I'm really excited to listen to Riley talk. I've known him for three years. I've heard about three or four words. He sat in my car today, didn't speak the whole way here. So I'm excited <laughs> for someone to ask him a question and for him to speak, because this will be monumental for me. A uh, very quiet kid. Uh, Riley uh, came from St. Francis. He was a walk-on into our program. Uh, now he's a scholarship athlete, obviously. Um, was in our bullpen. His sophomore year, we gave him a start. He pitched a no-hitter for seven innings. I took him out of the game after the seventh inning, and everyone wanted him to finish all nine, and I said seven was enough. Second start, he went seven innings without a hit. I took him out again, didn't allow him to go into the eighth for a no-hitter. He won his first eight starts for us as a starter, um, which was just phenomenal. Uh, last year, he was eight and five for us uh, with a 2.85 ERA. Um, went to the Cape and played last summer, so it was really a breakout year for him. A lot of people asked, you know, why wasn't he pitching earlier? And I said, well, that just kind of tells you what kind of coach I am. I just didn't know he was that talented, but we gave him that opportunity, so um, the best uh, for him. He, he's just been remarkable this year. He's got an opportunity to pitch for us on Fridays and, and do wonderful things. Uh, to his left is Riley Helen. Riley's been a four-year starter for us. Uh, started as a DH, started at second base, pitched for us as a freshman, caught for us last year, uh, will play first base and catch for us this year, and DH, uh, he'll hit in the middle of our lineup. He's been a mainstay for us, hit 329 last year for us with 34 RBIs, uh, one of the best hitters in the West Coast Conference last year. Um, he just, he gets in there and he, and he knows who he is and he knows what he wants to do with the bat and he does some wonderful things. I think when you think about USF and you think about the team, my biggest challenge starts in the outfield. There's six outfielders on our team uh, that all have a chance to play. There's five guys that I want to try to get into the lineup every single day, and I have to find a way to try to get all five of them in the lineup. So one of them will have to DH, and hopefully one of them will, de will play first base, and that's when Riley will have to catch. Uh, but that's my biggest challenge of the, of the year right now is to do that. Um, I'm, I'm one of the only coaches in the room, and I don't know if this is good or bad, but I know my starting rotation, and I know my starting lineup. Um, so uh, I, I, I feel fortunate that those guys are back, and I have an opportunity to say this is the role that they'll be in, and hopefully they can execute that role. So on Friday night, Riley Ornito will be our starter. He's a junior. On Saturday, Grant Neshack will be the starter on Saturdays. He's a transfer. Junior college transfer, started at Santa Clara, transferred to junior college, and came to USF. 
Uh, on Sundays is Landon Barasa. He was our Sunday starter last year. We leave him in that role because we feel like the conference is won sometimes on Sundays. Um, it's a battle. And Landon is a senior. And he's, he's, he's a really good arm for us. And uh, he's a really good mind. And he's the guy that can really handle that role of pitching on Sundays when you're either 1-1 one and one in the series, you're 2-0 and oh and trying to sweep the series, or you're 0-2 oh and, and trying not to get swept. So I think that's a, that plays a big factor. And sometimes we get caught up in Sunday as your third best starter, but he's a guy that can really help us in that role the best. Uh, when you look at the team, if, if, if the season starts tomorrow, we, we lead off with Tyler Villaroman. He's our center fielder. He's a junior. He's been a starter for two years for us. In the two hole would be Jack Winkler. He's a sophomore. He's our starting shortstop. Uh, Jack played third base for us last year, and he moves over to short this year, which is natural position. In the three hole would be John Allen. John Allen was a left fielder for us last year, had a really good start to the season, got injured and, and kind of struggled down the stretch, but ended up hitting over 300 with 10 home runs and, and 40 RBIs. Uh, John will be a senior this year. In the four hole, Riley Helen, who is right here next to me, Riley, uh, will stay in that spot. He's a senior, uh, knows what he wants to do in that role. And then we'll try to protect Riley with Jacob Westerman. He's our top newcomer. He's a junior. He transferred from the University of New Mexico, uh, and he sat out last year, and he'll be here this year to play for us. We think he's going to be a very good player. Uh, in the six hole will be Nick Yobedich. Nick is a sophomore kid, left-handed hitter, played right field for us last year, uh, DH'd a little bit. Uh, Nick is a very talented uh, player in the outfield. And then uh, seven hole will be Matt Mendibles. He's a junior college transfer from Yavapai Junior College. Um, that's a right-handed hitter. Uh, in the eight hole, that's that's debatable. That's our catching position, but Thomas McCarthy, kid from Sarah High School, will be the starting catcher. He's Riley's personal catcher. Riley won all eight starts with Thomas as the catcher. Thomas broke his ham eight bone, and then uh, that we broke up that twosome, so we're going to put them back together. They, there's some magical stuff there with the pitcher-catcher uh, matchup there with those two. Um, and then in the nine hole is Kyle Nell. He's a redshirt freshman. Uh, right-handed hitter. So we think those nine players, uh, you know, bullpen-wise, Joey Still, we'll close with Joey Still and Alex Pham. Joey Still is a senior right-handed pitcher. Alex Pham is a sophomore right-handed pitcher. We think those two will really help us from a bullpen standpoint. Um, the other catching situation, we have a junior college transfer, Chase Hopkinson, uh, who will see time there at the catching position. And then we have a a local kid from SI, Rob Emery, who transferred back from Dartmouth that will see time. Uh, we really feel fortunate. We have four guys that can catch for us. We have five guys in the outfield that could really play. Uh, we're going to try to plug those guys in and out of the lineup every day so that we can be complete.